Hello, everyone. Welcome to my medical statistical class. I'm King from Department of Statistics, School of Public Health. Last class, we have already learned something about uh null hypothesis, now parametric statistics. We learn a method named Rosen test, and we have learned two types of Rosen tests. Last class. Today we will finish all the things in chapter seven. The first, let's review what we have learned in chapter seven. We have learned a new method for hypothesis test that is now parametric statistics, and we have learned its advantages and disadvantages. We said that the now parametric tests are often quicker and easier. But if the data follows a normal distribution, we need to use parametric test instead of no parametric test. If we use the no parametric test wrongly, we will get the wrong results because the results will lose some information, power, and sensitivity. We have learned two types of wrong sum test. The first one is the Wilcoxon signed rank test. This method is used for one sample test or paired samples test. And the second one is the Wilcoxon rank sum test. And we said that this method is used for two samples test, especially two independent samples test. In Roxham test, we have mentioned that it is a method of non-parametric test, so we can we cannot compare the distribution of a variable by using its mean. So we use median to instead of the mean. So actually. In no parametric test, we compare the certain of the distribution of the variable by using its medians. So, in the step one of the hypothesis test of non-parametric non statistics, we use median as the hypothesis. So, h0 should be median of x equals to median of y. That is used for two independent samples test. If we want to compare one sample with a given median, the h0 should be median of x equals to the given median namely m0. If we use the method to solve the question about a paired sample, we can use the h0 that median of the difference equals to 0. So that is the h0, the null hypothesis. And the alternative hypothesis should be not equal. In this chapter, the most important thing is the procedure 
for us to calculate the test statistic. We have mentioned that in a non-parametric test, the test statistic should be the capital T value. It's not the little t, because the little t is used in t-test. That is a parametric test. And parametric test is based on a normal distribution and to compare the parameters from the different groups. So here, we use the capital T as the test statistic. So in the two types of uh, ransom tests, we have different procedures for calculation of the test statistic. For example, in Wilcoxon science rank test for one sample or paired samples, the procedure should be like this. The first, compute the difference. The difference equals to x minus the given median. This is for one sample test. For paired samples, the difference should be before, minus, or after. And notice that the sample size should be the number of non-zero differences. So that means if we find that the difference equals to zero, we need to omit the zero. So n should be n minus one. If we find two numbers of zero, the sample size should be n minus two. Number two. Ignoring signs when we are ranking the numbers. A sign ranks to the absolute value of the differences from smallest to largest. So we need to transform the differences into ranks. But at this time, please notice that actually we use the absolute value of the differences without signs. So we just rank all the absolute value of the differences from smallest to largest. If we find that some differences are the same, we call it a tie. We need to assign equal differences, namely a tie, the average of the ranks which will be assigned if the difference have not been tied. For example, we find the two smallest numbers are the same. So the ranks should be one and two, but the two numbers are the same. So it's a tie. They should have the same ranks, so we use the average of 1 and 2. So the rank for each number is 1.5, that is 1 plus 2 divided by 2. And during our ranking, notice that we need to omit all zero differences we have mentioned in the first step. Number three, after the ranking, we need to attach the signs of the original differences to the ranks. So that means if the difference is a positive number, its corresponding rank should be positive too. However, if the difference is negative, its rank should be negative too. By this way, we can get some rank positive and the others negative. And next step, next step, 
we need to calculate the summation of the rank. So we can get two types of summations. The first one is the summation of positive ranks. And the second one is the summation of negative ranks. We use t plus to represent the sum of all positive ranks and t minus represent the sum of all negative ranks. So we can get two t values, t plus and t minus. But from the two, we need to choose only one to be the test statistic. In one sample test, we can choose either one from the two as the test statistic because you choose either one, you will find that they can get the same conclusion. Step five, consult table A3 to determine the critical region. And we have mentioned that there is a printing error in our textbook in table A3. All the numbers in table A3 actually should be a range which is consisted by two numbers. So if the test statistic locates inside the range, that means P is bigger than alpha. So we cannot reject H0. But if the test statistic locates outside the range, that means P is less than alpha. So we need to reject H0. So that is what happened in Wilcoxon signed rank test for one simple test. This is the procedure for us to get the test statistic. And how can we how do we do in a paired sample? In a paired sample test. Here the procedure is similar with what we have mentioned before. We need to calculate the difference and arrange the differences in order of the magnitude, ignoring signs, and then attach the signs of the original differences to the ranks. In the second type of rank sum test, that is Wilcoxon rank sum test for two independent samples. So it's the same, but we have two independent samples, x and y, and we want to know if the median of x and the median of y are the same. So the h0 should be median of x equals to median of y. The alternative hypothesis is not equal. The procedure to get the test statistic is as follows. Number one, rank all the observed values in the two groups from smallest to largest because in this method, we do need to calculate the differences. So most often, there will be no negative numbers. So we don't need to care about the signs. We just put all the numbers from the two groups together and rank them from smallest to largest. But notice that we need to assign the average of the ranks if the observation values are equal. So that is similar with what happened in the first type of rank sum test. Number two, sum the ranks separately in each group. That means during our ranking, we rank the pool numbers. So that means we need to put 
all the numbers from the two groups together and then order it. But when we want to calculate the test statistic, we need to sum the ranks separately. We need to sum the ranks in group 1 and then sum the ranks of group 2. Number 3, the test statistic is the sum of the ranks for the smaller sample. So that means for group 1 and group 2, we can get two rank sums. But from these two rank sums, we need to choose only one. So which one should we choose? We need to choose the one has the smaller sample size. And then we can find a critical range from table A4. The same with table A3. There is a printing error in table A4. All the numbers should be a critical range consisted by two numbers. So it's similar that if the test statistic locates inside the range, we need to not reject H0 because P is bigger than alpha. But if the test statistic is outside the range, that means P is less than alpha and we need to reject H0. Okay, so that is what we learned in last class. But we can notice that these two types of methods for ransom test is used for one sample test or two pair samples test or two independent samples test. But if we match a question with more than two groups, how can we do with that? So at this time, we need to use a new method. This method it's called classical valleys test. So that means this method is used for comparison of more than two groups. So this is a method for the comparison of the medians from more than two groups. The hypothesis being tested by the KW statistic is that all the medians are equal to one another. And the alternative hypothesis is that the medians are not all equal. Here, KW statistic means the Kraskowalis test. Because that, here in this method, we need to compare more than two groups. So we have mentioned that in chapter 10 in the ANOVA. When the number of groups is more than two, is H0 should be. For example, we have three groups. H0 should be mu1 equals to mu2 equals to mu3. Three. That is what happened in ANOVA. We said that ANOVA is a method of parametric test. This method compares the mean of the, of the data. So here, in KW test, it's, it's one method of no parametric test. So it's H0 should be the median of group 1 equals to median of group 2 equals to median of group 3. So we can say that H0 is all the medians are equal to one another. We use this sentence as the H0. Now let's think about what happened in HA. In ANOVA, we said that HA should be 
at least one sample differs from the others. That means we have two conditions in H A. The first one is mu one is not equal to mu two, is not equal to mu three. That means all of the three means are different from each other. And the second condition is at least one sample differs from the other two. So maybe two of the three are the same, but the third one is di different from these two. So we call it at least one mean differs. Here we use the same way in KW test. We call it the medians are not all equal. So that means at least one median differs. So this is an important thing you need to notice. Okay, now let's watch an example. You can read it by yourself. Okay, I think you have finished that. Let's analyze the information given in the question. Here we can find that the patients are divided into three groups. So it's more than two. And we measured the changes in weight and blood pressure during a period of time. The question is test whether or not there are differences in median reductions in diastolic blood pressure. So that means we need to compare the medians from the three groups. This is the data. We can find that we have three groups, groups group one, group two, and group three. So here, we need to compare the median of the three groups. So the important thing is the same. That is how can we get the test statistic? Okay, so it's similar with what happened in two independent run some tests. The first one, we need to run all the simulated values in three groups from the smallest to the largest value and the sum the rank separately in each group so that is the same that means we need to rank the pooled data the pooled data means we need to put all the numbers from three groups together and then order it from smallest to largest and the rank it but when we calculate the summation of the ranks we need to do it separately for each group okay let's go back to last slide here we put all the numbers from the three groups together and try to find the, the smallest here we find that the smallest we find that some numbers are negative, some numbers are positive, some, no some numbers are zero. But please notice that we said that the zero should be omitted and we use the absolute value of the number and then get the rank. But this is only happened in one sample test and paired sample test. In KW test, we don't need to worry about the signs and the zero. So we just take it. If, if this is a negative number, we just consider it as a negative number. If this is a zero, it's just a zero.
So we don't need to omit or use its absolute value. We just rank it from the smallest to the biggest. So here we can find that the smallest number is negative 20. It's the smallest in all of the three groups. So its rank is 1. And the next one should be it's here, negative 16. We can find that here is a positive 16. Their absolute value is the same, but I have mentioned that in KW test, we don't need to use the absolute value. So these two numbers do not have the same rank. We just use the numbers with its signs. So this is the second one. Its rank is 2. And next one is negative 14. Its rank is 3. And the next one is negative 12. It's 4. And the next one is negative 10. Its rank is 5. And so on. We rank all the numbers. Here, let's take this number as an example here. We can find that there is one, two numbers of six. That means these two numbers have the same rank. So if we match this condition, we should use the average of their ranks. We find that this number, these two numbers should be rank, should be ranked as 10 and 11. So we use the average. So its rank should be 10.5. Okay, so after that, we ranked all the numbers. And then we need to sum the ranks separately in each group. So let's clean it. Here in group one, we sum all the ranks in group one together and we got this rank sum. We can find that its rank sum is 164.5. And for the group two, the summation should be 436.5. For group three, the summation of ranks is 179. So that is the rank sum. But we need to get a single test statistic. And how can we solve that question? Now we have three rank sums. So this is the number two in procedure of calculation of the test statistic. Here we use a new test statistic that is H h value h defined in terms of n and r notice that r means the rank sum for each group so here we have three r's the sample size is little n and r means the rank sum for each group this statistic h can be used as the test statistic it's very special in KW test. So only in KW test, we need to use H as the test statistic. That is different from the two types of rank sum test we have learned last class. So here, this is the formula for H value. We can find that the formula is confused. This is difficult for us to calculate by hand. So you do need to remember this formula, but you need to know the procedure of getting the test statistic. How can we get the test statistic? How can we rank all the numbers in three groups? Okay, let's analyze the this formula. Here, the little n means the sample size. But please notice that here, 
in this position, n means the total sample size of the three groups. But here, after the sigma symbol, this n means the sample size for each group. Here, in the bracket, the letter n means the total sample size. So they are the same, but this one is different. This one should be the sample size for each group. R means the rank sum for each group. So that means we need to sum the numbers of three groups together. So here, let's clean this slide. Here we can find that n is the total sample size. In this question, the sample size of the pooled numbers, that means the sample size of the three groups is 39. And here, this is the rank sum for group one, and this is the sample size for group one. This is the rank sum for group two, this is the sample size for group two, and this is for group three. And this is n, the total sample size. We put, we input all the numbers to the formula, and then we can get the result. The result is 19.133, so that is the h value. So this is the test statistic. Okay, next one. Let's watch the procedure for the hypothesis test. We have already know what is the test statistic. And the next one, we need to know the procedure for the hypothesis. Step one is similar with the other hypothesis test. H0 should be our medians are equal and HA. This is alternative HA. HA is the medians are not all equal. So that means at least one medians differ. One median differs. And alpha is 0 0.05. Step two, we have already calculated the test statistic. So H is 19.133. The statistic H actually follows the chi-square distribution. So please notice that this H follows a special distribution called chi-square distribution. So we don't need to check the critical range from table A3 or table A4. It needs another table, that is chi-square value table. So. This table is a uh, table A5, table A5 in our page 157. I will show you that later. So we need to check a critical value or a standard value from the chi square distribution. And we need to compare each value with chi square value. So it's the same with what happened in Z test or T test. If H is bigger than the critical value, we need to reject H0. But if H is less than the critical value of X of chi square distribution, we need to not reject H0. So here the chi value should be denoted like this. We can find that in the right corner, there are two numbers, alpha and k minus one. Here, alpha is two-sided 0 0.05. It's the same with what happened in z-test and t-test. And here, k minus one. k minus one is the df degree of freedom of the chi distribution. Here, k is the number of groups. For example, in this question, we have three groups. So k equals to three. So its df is k minus one is two. So 
we should find the critical value for 0 0.05 and 2. Okay, so now let's turn to our page 157. I will show you how to use table A5. This is table A5, the table of critical values for category distribution. So here, you need to notice that this symbol, this is not x square. This is a Greek character. We call it chi. So this is chi square. And chi square is a method of hypothesis 2 in our medical statistic. Next class, next hour, we will learn this method called chi square test. It's used for comparison the reach or ratio from categorical data. So here we think that H follows chi square distribution. So we need to check a critical value from this table. And here we can find that in the first column it's the DF, the degree of freedom. And we have mentioned that in KW test, the DF equals to K minus 1. And K is the number of groups in the question. In our question, we have three groups. So here, DF is 2. And next one, we need to find alpha. So here, P is actually alpha. And we can find the 0, 6, uh, zero 0 0.05. Is here. So in the cross position, the critical or the standard value of catch square should be 5.99. Okay, let's go back to our PPT. We have find that the critical value is 5. Is 5.99. And here our test statistic is 19.133. So we compare these two numbers. We can find that H is bigger than K square value. So that means H is more than the critical number, the critical value. So it means P is less than 0.05 so we need to reject h0 that means at least one median differs from the others so maybe all the medians are different from each other or maybe there are two medians are the same but differ from the third one Finally, the conclusion should be there is significantly difference among the three groups. So that is the procedure for hypothesis test in KW test. Okay, so that is all for chapter 7. Okay, next one, let's do an exercise. You can read it by yourself. Okay, I think you have finished that. In this exercise, we suppose the data follows and that does not follow a normal distribution. We don't have mentioned any information about the normal distribution in this question. So we assume it does not follow a normal distribution. I have mentioned that uh, in chapter seven, when we don't talk about the normal distribution, when I won't, when I don't show you the information about the normal distribution, that means the data does not follow a normal distribution. But in our exam, in our examination, if I want you to use Z-test or T-test or some kind of 
my search for parametric test, I will tell you the data follows a normal distribution. So if you don't find this sentence, that means the data follows does not follow a normal distribution. So you do you need to use no parametric test. So here, let's analyze the information given in this question. This is the values of cholesterol readings taken after 12 hours of fasting and repeated one hour after eating. So here we can find this is fasting. This is uh, after eating. So we can find that this is group one and this is group two. This is the ID for subjects. So think about that. This is two samples test, but a question about to pair the samples or to independent independent samples. Which one is right? Pair the samples or independent samples? Yes, it's paired samples because we can find that <clears throat> for, for each individual, he got two numbers. The first one is fasting and the next one is after eating. So this is before and after. So these two numbers are matched. So we can say that it's a paired samples test. Okay, because the data does not follow a normal distribution. So we can use paired test of wrong sum test. Actually, its name is Wilcoxon signed wrong test. Okay, so the most important thing is how to get the test statistic. So how can we get that? The first one, we need to calculate the differences. Here we can use fasting minus after eating. So this is the differences. But we can find that here we have so many tight numbers. That means we have so many same differences numbers, right? Five, 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 ten, ten, ten. There are so many numbers are the same. So we call it ties. There are many ties. So we said that if there is a tie, we need to use the average of the ranks. So we transform the differences into its rank now. And notice that in paired sample test, we need to use the absolute value of the differences. So we order the absolute value of differences from smaller to biggest. Okay, let's find which one has the smallest absolute value. That is five, right? But we find that there is one, two, three, four, five. Five numbers, five differences have the same absolute value, five, right? Okay, so we use the average. So the average should be because there are four, uh, there are five smallest numbers. So its rank should be one, two, three, four, and five. So it, so the average should be the summation of one to five divided by five. So this is the its rank is three. So this is the rank for all of these differences of five. 
but don't forget its sign. If the difference is negative, its rank should be negative. If the difference is positive, the rank should be positive. And then next number is 10. Right? We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 10. So that means we need to use the average of 6 to 9 divided by 4. So it's 7.5. So the rank for 10 is 7.5. But we can find that here we have two negative ranks. And the biggest one is 15. The absolute value is 15. There is only one number of 15. So its rank should be 10 because we have 10 numbers here. Okay, so now we have transformed the differences into ranks and we get the ranks. Someone uh, uh someone's are uh, negative ranks and some someone's are uh, positive ranks. And after that, we need to calculate the t plus and t minus separately. So that means we need to sum all the positive ranks together and sum all the negative ranks together. From the two, we can choose either one as the test statistic. For example, let's um calculate the positive the positive rank sum. So we have one, two, three, three positive ranks. So that is uh, twenty. So we use this number as the test statistic. And next one, let's find the critical range from table A3. Remember that the test statistic is 20. OK, let's go to the table A3. OK, here is the table A3. So we need to use the number of n here we don't get a difference of zero so the sum of size should be 10. when alpha equals to 0 0.05 the range is 8 to 47 and we can find that the test statistic is 20. this number locates inside the range so that means p is bigger than alpha so, so we don't need to reject the H0. So that means there is no differences between fasting and after eating. Okay, so that is the answer to the exercise. Let's take a 10 minutes break.